Hello and welcome to another demonstration. If you're in the YouTube premiere, I'll be in the chat, so just to say hi or ask any questions and see if I can answer any. For the first demonstration this month, I'm going to be doing a carousel horse in ink because it's actually October, so it's Inktober following Jake Parker's Inktober challenge. And I'm going to be using walnut ink. This brand isn't made from walnuts. There are other brands made from walnuts. And traditionally, ink was made from walnuts and it was a black ink. But over the years, it faded to a wonderful sepia colour. So Rembrandt drawings or Leonardo drawings. And actually, it's that sepia colour that is now replicated, but made from artist quality pigments. It's a lovely ink to use and it gives you that beautiful sepia finish. So I'm going to be using it with a traditional dip pen. So I've got a couple, don't know if I'm going to use them both. So this is a calligraphy pen. It has um, a flat end. I'm not sure I'm going to use it, but I, I've got it in case I'm taking a long time doing a lot of lines because this it actually um, creates thicker lines. But what I'm going to be using is quite a thin um, drawing pen. So it gives nice clean lines and then I will fill out using a brush because I think ink can be more than just line. I like to see it, especially with this, it's water soluble, so it moves with water. So I like to see the line and then all the other possibilities you get with an ink. So dipping it in as you would do a traditional dip pen, just making sure that the well is filled there and off we go. I'm going to start. I have a few facts about carousel horses. A lot I didn't know. Part of the prompt is that it's the first week of October and in Nottingham we have the Goose Fair, which has been going on since the Middle Ages. Um, and I think that's probably the first time I ever went on a carousel horse. Used to love as a child. So it's probably the first fairground ride that you were big enough to go on. So I would love these. And I have to be fair, every time we pass one, if you get a chance to ride, you still do. Um, and I've done some research and it's actually very interesting about these. The history as well as all these beautiful details on the horses. So history very interesting they probably about 500 AD there was a kind of game or it's a practice for knights or men on horseback um, from Arabia through into Europe where they would go around in a circle on horses and either use swords or throw items like a, a leather ball to each other just to practice their horse skills. Um, and I know during the 12th century um, and the Crusades, it became much more of a, a knight's practice. Um, and the name Carousel, so you will see the name Carousel for this particular amusement ride. And that actually means in Spanish, little battle, because of the knights going around in a circle as part of their practice of horsemanship. Um, following traditions of the Byz Byzantines as well. So it's, it's in that era, it was a well-known practice. And it became a fun activity as eventually horses were on a circle platform and then the platform was rotated originally with horses or a, a beast of burden like a, a, a cow or something would take move around and make sure this carousel rotated and then gradually over the centuries it became steam powered right up to what you see today and this is why Traditionally, you have horses. 
Um, nowadays, I think you have more exotic animals like unicorns or cockerels or anything that's able to have and stand on to a roundabout, they're called, or gallopers. Lots of different names for this carousel. So this is a traditional horse. And the horses also have different stances. This one is called a jumper. And the reason for that is all four feet are in the air. So traditionally you'll get a standing animal where at least three feet and one raised and they usually aren't the ones that nowadays go up and down and then you get a prancing horse and they have at least two feet on the ground and two feet in the air and then this one which is called a jumper which is all four feet and it's the jumpers that usually go up and down on the carousel to be fair they're my favorite ones um, but the decoration is, is beautiful and, you know, very ornate. And horse, the horses are treasured and they are there for a very long time on the rides. Now, also, the way that the horse faces will denote what country they're from. So in the UK, I would say this is a UK horse because it's one I've taken myself. So they're facing to the left, but America and other countries, the horse is faced to the right. It's just the way the carousel goes round. And the decoration on the horse is much more detailed on the side that's facing the um, viewers than it is on the other side. Some roundabouts or carousels have smaller horses at the back, which are more suited for smaller children. And the bigger horses, the fancy horses, are right at the front. just putting on the detail. Now this one is called Alice. I see. E, Alice. Now for the patterning. I'm only doing one horse because I don't really have the time to do all of them because you have at least two or three going back. I think one will show you in enough detail. I also like the way some of them smile. This one isn't quite a smiler, but in the image, the one next door has got a huge smile, even though their teeth do give me the creeps a little bit. They have very straight teeth, but you can't see the teeth on this one. Right, looking at the pattern in, kind of lots of flourishes, all in gold. It comes around here, there. Um. What I've found with this, you do have to use the pen in that kind of direction. If I try and go backwards like I possibly would with a pencil, it scratches and catches. The paper is a cartridge paper. It's not a heavy weight. Um, I think it's a 150, which is suitable enough because I am going to be adding water for the tones. Okay. And then they have some depth. There. That 
goes there. There's another you know, shape there. And then on the rump, you've got a curve round here. Goes up there. I mean, you can put as little or as much as you want on here. I think these decorations are quite nice. Then it's the nice thing about using a dip pen is you just have to keep dipping it back in the ink. It's just part of the process. And I quite enjoy the dipping and the thinking about where I'm going next. Goes up there. Okay, so that is gone around in a line. So it's just Add a little bit of dark areas. You can see here, pushing the nib down and it releases big dark area, I think. I'll come back to this because I'm going to now use a brush which is actually still dirty from the last time I used this ink. Okay. And I'm putting it onto this palette because it just gives me a chance to water it down and control how dark it is because I want to build up in layers. So this is quite shadowed, a bit too wet. And it's easier to put it on lightly and build it up than it is to take it off. So let's bring that round, dark under here. So these are also quite shiny. Um, so I'm going to have to just think about shine as well just so it gives it the full characteristic you recognise on one of these horses. Dark behind there. It's going to be dark under the belly. Like I say, you can easily put more colour on. I just can't take it off. So this at the moment is just a few layers. Let's go straight into the ink and just put it neat so you can see the difference there with the neat colour compared to the watered down. Now it's not very strong you can with this ink get a darkening uh, walnut ink and that literally is much darker much more to be honest the truer colour you used to get from walnut ink but I do find you can build up enough tonal values by just layering this ink so saddle Another layer and you can see there how it's now starting to build up. Let's put a bit there. Right, so let's look at its legs. Under the belly is going to be dark. Even though it's a light horse, it's still gonna have some shadow. So just thinking about that. few darker areas.
especially on the mane here. So it's darker in there. Right, let's darken along here. The darkest areas I'm going to do, I will go back in with the pen because I find that that does, for me, darken the most. These feet are quite dark. I will have to go back in. All I'm doing is just building up the layers of this very transparent and not necessarily overly strong ink. You can see every layer gets darker. some more darker areas on the mane. Now, the manes, some manes have been carved so that you can actually grab onto the mane as a handle. Just using this just to plot around the shape so I can see Let's go back in with a pen. The eye darken, like I did with the ears. I can darken. Go back into this bridle. Comes across here. This circle comes around the neck. scratching because I'm using this fine nib. Just bringing that ink I've got on there out a little bit more. I'm trying to show this flowing shape that they have on the mane. Okay, let's go back in. This banner I have on the neck with the name on. What I'm trying to do is just give a little bit more depth. Okay. So this is actually quite dark. So I can fill that area in. Around the shape. Dark band here. Again, it's dark here. Dipping. Don't 
right there. Let's make this darker as well. Now I do have to be careful, I can feel it, because this is a, a, a reasonable quality cartridge paper, but if I am scraping on the surface, it, it does tend to pill and get a bit bubbly, because literally I'm just roughing up the surface of the paper as it's wet. And keeping the saddle on. And in here, it's darker. You do feel when you're running out of ink. around and again go over the hooves because they are quite dark now I can see that this needs to be a bit darker so cross hatching which you do with a pen I can build up a little bit more depth here rather than the flat depth that I have with the brush. You can see how it drops back, drops back to that sepia colour. As it goes on quite dark, but it drops back a little bit more. Add some shading under this leg because it is behind. Yeah. Right, let's strengthen the pole because that's a very solid, it has to hold the horse. And I can now bring out. these spirals which I lost a little bit a little bit of dark a little bit of neatening and I can bring that shape back oh maybe I need a little bit more See how dark I can get with another layer. I think here needs to be dark. Let's just I like this saddle. Maybe alter that shape a little bit more. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I'm going to leave that and go back with my brush with quite a wet wash because I want to just add some value to this. It, then it's not that quite flat white and shadow needs to be a little bit more controlled. And 
with the brush, I'm going to put on a few little details. So there's another pole here, which goes Like I say, it does fade back. Come. I'm just going to pick up some of the key features in the background, just so it's not so flat. Picking up some of the shapes that I can see. To suggest that the horse is on a carousel, not just flying in the air. That's pretty much done because I could just keep working on it and then lose some of those nice qualities that I have. So I hope you enjoyed that and join me again soon for another demonstration. Mm -hmm.